Hello and thank you for joining me. We're going to be looking at the use of JavaScript with inside Sage CRM. This is very much an introduction as there's a lot to cover. JavaScript is a simple, powerful language used within a large number of business applications. The language is used within Sage CRM to define certain types of business rules, to control processes, and to assemble and display custom screens. Knowledge of JavaScript is an important skill for anyone wanting to carry out advanced customization, both within the browser and mobile interfaces for Sage CRM. We're going to be understanding the way in which Sage CRM works. Of course, the database is fundamental to understanding everything with inside Sage CRM, and there is a logical sequence about uh, how we've assembled the training. So everything from uh, building outwards from the database through to the interface through to the scripting languages. And that's why this lesson builds on the previous lessons and nearly all of the following lessons will draw on the information that we discuss here. JavaScript is used throughout Sage CRM to define business rules and to control the behavior of the system. We've aimed this lesson to be suitable for non-technical system administrators who want to be able to understand more about using JavaScript to control workflow and to implement system cu simple customizations using the language. The ideas discussed in this lesson are developed in the other advanced customization classes. I said earlier that JavaScript is used throughout Sage CRM. So let's start seeing where it's used and how it builds up a web of interacting scripts. This may look like a strange diagram, but bear with me as I'm going to build this up so you'll see how everything works together. You can see that we have to think about the browser in which the user interface is presented to the user, and that's in the top part of the screen. The middle layer is the application layer, and that runs on the web server, and then you have the database, which is stored um, storing all of the metadata for the system as well as the business data or the application data. And Sage CRM is very much a web application. We experience it inside a browser. And a user, by clicking on a hyperlink or by submitting a form, will send an HTTP request from the browser to the web server and then the Sage CRM application will respond by assembling the HTML that is then returned to the browser. If we think about an individual screen with inside Sage CRM, and we can think about the Opportunity Summary screen, perhaps, we're going to see that there are three types of scripts that can be added to each of the fields contained within a screen. These are Create Scripts, On-Chain Scripts, Validate Scripts. There is a big division about where these scripts are run and therefore what they can control. On a screen, like the Opportunity Summary screen, um, we can think about the way in which it's requested. So when we request an Opportunity Summary screen, we're making a request from the browser to the server. The fields are included in a screen definition. Now, as these are pulled together within the server, they're triggered to fire their create scripts. These create scripts are then executed on the server, and that's the web server. The create scripts, because they can change the properties of the fields, so whether the field is required, whether the field is in is hidden, these control, these properties control how the fields look and behave. They therefore change the HTML that is then delivered into the browser. Within the browser, when the screen is changed to edit mode, and if you are going to change a screen into edit mode, you actually are issuing a, another request to the browser. So whenever you want to move from a view to an edit mode, you're, you're actually refreshing and repulling the screen in a different mode. The data can be entered and or edited, perhaps. When you have editable screens, the on-change scripts are delivered into the screen and these scripts can fire when they detect the value in a field is altered. 
Now, if you're looking at when a field changes, these are scripts that fire inside the browser. So that's inside the client and not the server. And because it's firing in a different place, there will be different objects and data available for the script to reference. If the data is then changed by a user and wants to commit that into the database, they're actually going to be submitting that form into uh, the, the server. So each field within the server can have a script associated with it uh, which has a job to check that the data submitted that's destined to be committed into the database makes business sense. We can call this the validation or validate rule. And this validate rule checks the quality of the data to make sure that the data does not break any business rule. An example of that is to say, is this an allowed value? Is this within an allowed range? And if the data is not any good, then the validate rule will block the insertion and commitment into the database. And there's another type of script that's executed within the server. And these scripts are executed still within inside the web server, but before the data is actually committed into the database. And we call these scripts table level scripts. As the data is inserted, or as it's updated, or as it is triggered, it triggers an event. These events can have scripts attached to them that can cause other work to be done. This means that a change to an assigned user, perhaps, can trigger an email. Or if a new opportunity is inserted, then we could have a new task automatically added into the user's diary. And you'd express those tasks, the insertion of extra things, using JavaScript. Now, so far, I've only really considered the idea of a static screen, like the Opportunity Summary screen. But entities like opportunities, like cases, can be workflowed. The screens can be dynamically changed as we work our way through a business process. And JavaScript is used within the workflow rules to determine the conditions in which actions and behavior within the workflow become available. In Sage CRM, we use JavaScript to control the workflow process. All of these scripts fall into an even larger environment where we can have time-based behavior, notifications and escalations that can also interact with the same data. Now, these escalation rules are not written in JavaScript, but they do form part of the environment in which our JavaScript scripts work and which allow for the definition of a full set of business rules that a customer needs. But a word of warning before we start. JavaScript has nothing to do with the language Java. Now, you may hear the names JavaScript, JScript, and sometimes ECMAScript being used. JavaScript is the original name of the language when the language was first developed by Netscape. ECMAScript is the name of the language standard developed by ECMA, um, that's European Computers Manufacturers uh, Association, from the original JavaScript implementation. It's the official standard for the language. And JScript was Microsoft's name for their own implementation. Now, I'm, I'm only ever going to refer to JavaScript, and although there are some diff syntax differences between um, local flavors of JavaScript, these are not important enough for me to make a distinction here. Now, in theory, different languages can be used in Sage CRM for different purposes. But JavaScript is the default language and is the nearly universally used use language. For all intents and purposes, this should be the language that you use for scripting inside Sage CRM. JavaScript is processed and executed by a scripting engine, and it's the scripting engine that actually determines the default language used in each circumstance, whether that's in the browser or inside an ASP page. And references to the scripting engine are either implicit or explicit. In Sage CRM, any of the internal code that we write, and this is the code that's executed on the server, and these are the field level scripts, the workflow conditions, the table level scripts, these are all implicitly JavaScript. However, when we're writing and editing a scripting page using an ASP page for a custom entity or changing something else, then you'll find that we will need to explicitly reference the language to be used as JavaScript. 
and how we will meet this again when we cover ASP scripting. Here you can see that I've switched into Sage CRM and I've navigated to the administration area, then into customization and I've opened the opportunity detail box. Each field has a create script in which the JavaScript can access server-side objects, there's an on-change script which can refer to client-side or browser objects, and a validate script that, again, that can again access server-side server -side objects. So server-side objects are references that can be made to the internal code of CRM exposed through the API. So they're not core to the language of JavaScript. They are additive because they've been provided. And they can be in the form of system variables or they can be in the form of functions, etc. And each of the locations within inside SageCRM that we'll be writing will use the core language plus additional functions unique to SageCRM or unique to the browser API. If I exit from the opportunity screen, um, and I've returned uh, turn to the customization area. Um, I can now, um, if I switch into the company customization area, I can navigate to the table level scripts tab, uh, and you can see that I've already defined a script here. What we can see inside this definition is part of the script, and and here I'm showing you what's called the uh, update record event function. Here, this is what will happen to a company record as, as data in the company record is updated. Now, otherwhere, other, other places that we can do this, if I come into Advanced Customization, um, I can go down and look at the workflow, and I can look inside the new custom workflow in, a, in my system. I've got one called New Opportunity. And if I look at the rule definition in here, we can see that JavaScript has been used, and you can see that JavaScript condition box in the middle there, JavaScript condition has been used to control when this workflow rule should be available to a user. If I click away from the workflow, I can now have a look at the customization area again. And so I can look at another area where JavaScript is used. And this happens to be the component manager. And this is relevant to anyone working with advanced customization of Sage CRM because Components are how we can deliver customization created in one system into another system. If I click on the component details, I can now look at the JavaScript that would be generated if I wanted to create a component in order to transfer the changes I've made in my system into another system. So if I click on preview script, you can see that this script is generated by Sage CRM itself. And right now I need to switch back into my presentation. Just one mention is, and this is uh, something that is discussed within this thread of developer or advanced customization lessons, and this is the advanced customization manager, advanced email manager, sorry, advanced email manager. Um, we're going to be looking at this in some detail in another lesson, but um, this is an example of what's called a rule template that processes inbound emails, and you can see that this is all expressed in JavaScript. And there are, in fact, other areas that uh, use JavaScript. Uh, all scripts in screens can be assumed to be JavaScript. Um, outside of screens, we can actually add tabs or button groups that allow us to invoke JavaScript as well. There's a, something called a technique called a pseudo protocol, which allows us to call functions as a button or a tab is clicked. And there are discussions of that on site on the community and of course ASP pages for application extensions and for self-service use JavaScript and there are lessons specifically about the use of JavaScript in ASP pages and within self-service coming up within the cycle of training now we can use any language that we want to work with when we think about uh, the SOAP and RESTful web services um, if we want to use uh, either of the uh, forms of API, then the only consideration is that the language should be able to create a web request. And so if you're writing something that outside of CRM, you, you might want to prefer to write with PHP or Java. That's fine. The .NET API allows extensions to be created 
in the main uh, CRM interface, and that can use any .NET capable language. However, we only provide examples of C Sharp within the documentation and training material. So only JavaScript and C Sharp are provided inside the SDK and in the examples given on the community.